For the flag block, I have a blue star square. Uh, this is my beige print, my red, and my green. I have already copied my foundation pattern onto foundation paper. I do want to point out because there are two patterns on a two foundations on a page in the pattern you won't have your quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around so you need to keep that in mind later. My number one piece is red and I'm going to be working on the other side of it but I just want to show you. I want to make sure that my fabric covers that with at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around which should not be a problem. I just don't know if you'll be able to see on camera when I do that. So I'm going to line it up and put a pin in it just to hold it there. And then my number two piece, if we look on this side, is the beige or the cream. So I need, oh, when I put my red piece down, it's wrong sides against the paper, but every piece after that is right sides down. So now my beige piece goes on top of this, and this is where down here is where my I'm going to be sewing. So I want to match my long edge here. I'm going to flip it over and now I'm going to put two pins in it so that it doesn't twist around on me. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine. I'm going to start stitching a couple of stitches out here beyond my line. Sew on the line and end a couple of stitches out here. I will be shortening my stitch length to about 1.5 and I would recommend you use a size 80 or 90 needle. I've stitched my first line and I like to use an add a quarter plus to trim. You could just use a card and um, actually I'm going to trim this way first. You could just use an index card or an envelope to fold back on and then just a regular ruler to measure your quarter of an inch. That would be fine too. I'm going to fold back and I'm going to cut my strips off. And then I will fold here. I think I'm pretty close to a quarter already on this. If it's not exactly a quarter, it's not the end of the world. It can be a little less. It could be just a little bit more too. And now I am going to take it to my pressing surface and I'm going to press the down toward the second piece that I added. Now that I have pressed, I am going to go ahead and fold on my next stitching line, which is a stitching line between number two and number three. So I'm gonna put the beveled edge of my add a quarter plus on the line and I'm going to fold back. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim my quarter of an inch now. And the reason for doing this is it makes it easier to line up my next pieces because I know where my quarter inch seam is, except for I think I was a little bit off on my fold. That was. So my number three piece is red. So I'm going to take the red strip again. It's going to be right sides against the white. And I know where my quarter of an inch is over here now because I've trimmed it. So I can just line the piece up there as well. I need to flip it. And put a couple pins in it again so that it doesn't shift while I'm pinning. You can sew this without pinning if you want to. Whenever I do that, I tend to have my fabrics flip up and it's not any fun to rip out that short of a stitch length. So now I'm going to stitch on this line. Again, a couple of stitches before I hit the line. Stitch across the line and a couple of stitches off the other side. My piece is stitched on and because I had already pre-trimmed this to the quarter of an inch, as long as your fabric stays straight on there, you really don't need to trim it again on this part. So I've already pressed down toward the red. And my next piece I'm putting on is four, which is the blue stars. So I'm going to fold on that line. And where the stitches go out, we're just going to tear the paper away from the fabric there so that we can fold back on the line. 
And now I'm going to trim this side to a quarter of an inch. And my blue stars go here. So you can, if it makes any difference, which way the points are on this, you can play with it if you want to. I don't think it really matters. But we're just going to go with our raw edges here and we want it centered so that it's going to cover here. I don't need it all the way out into my border and I can see the line here and I can see the line here. I don't know if you can on the camera. So I'm just going to center on that and I will pin it again and I will stitch a couple of stitches out in this piece across the line and a couple stitches out into the next piece. Okay, once again, I have pressed toward the last piece I added. The next piece that's going on is A5, which is the beige or the cream stripe. I'm going to fold on that line right here between my red and blue and my beige stripe. So the next line that I'm going to stitch on and trim off to my quarter inch. And now I'm going to add my beige strip, right sides together, just along that edge that I just cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the stripes on here before I come back to the camera. It's the same process. We add a piece, we press toward it, we trim our quarter of an inch, add the next numbered piece, and they are all labeled so we know which color goes where. I've added my final red stripe and pressed it, so now I'm ready to trim up and we're gonna add the green border around the edges. So the trim up process is exactly the same as we've been doing each time. Fold back on the line and trim so that we have a quarter of an inch. I'm going to do that all the way around and then I just because. sides should be pretty good because I've been trimming off the stripes as I go. So they should be fairly close to a quarter of an inch already. And finally the bottom. Okay, so number nine is first. We're gonna sew number nine on and then number 10. It's exactly the same process. Doesn't really matter whether you do nine or 10 first. So I'm going to match up. I'm gonna match up both on one, whichever end I'm starting on and here because I already have my quarter of an inch here. So when I flip it, I will still have a quarter out there, that's what I'm talking about when I'm lining up here. If you want to go a little extra, that's fine. So I'm just going to line up the raw edges, right sides together, and again, pin and pin and sew a couple stitches before I hit the line, down the line, a couple stitches off the line. I've stitched the green to both sides of the block and pressed. Um, I'm going to just trim this one off. If you want to, you can double check your top and bottom edges. I already trimmed mine, but when you're adding the green on the sides, you might have gotten off from your quarter on the edges. This side's okay. Check the other side. I'm a little bit wide down here on this end. Okay, add that in and add that in. So I'm going to add the last two pieces to the top and bottom. Again, I've trimmed my quarter inch so I can just line up. And I don't need this to go all the way out here. I just need it to go a little beyond the paper because remember, we don't necessarily have a quarter of an inch seam allowance on the paper. So you wanna make sure you do allow for that. I'm going to match, pin, 
and again stitch top and bottom. Here's my my block is all pieced, so to that point it's finished. I want to point out that I like to stitch my fabric to the foundation inside the seam allowance. That's optional, but I like to do it because it holds it there for when I'm trimming the block down. It also holds it there when I'm um, sewing it to other blocks because I will leave the foundation on this block until it's sewed together with other blocks on all four sides. It's probably not that big a deal on this block since the grain lane grain lines all accurate but it's a good habit to get into when you're doing foundation piecing because sometimes your grain lines aren't straight so this holds it the paper holds it stable until it can be put in with something else to hold it now I'm ready to turn the block down it's going to be a five inch finished block which we, means we need it to be five and a half inches and the way I do it is I like to line up my quarter inch mark on the finished the line is the finished edge of the block, so I'm lining the quarter inch mark up with a regular ruler because if you try the add a quarter, there's no build up anymore to hold your ruler in place. Again, quarter inch line on the ruler is on my finished line on my block. And then if you want to double check when we get to the other side, I'm putting my half inch line there. Oops. Well, it won't work that way. We want to make sure it's five and a half. So I have my five and a half here, my five and a half here. And actually, that is not coming out with my foundation to exactly um, on exactly the quarter inch mark. So that's a good way to check. I want to, I want it to be five and a half. So I'm going to add the extra and there is the finished flag block. For my cabin in the cotton block I have a beige square, a dark orange strip, a brown floral strip, another orange strip, and dark, it says dot strip, but ours is just a dark brown. Um, when you pull them out of the kit from the square, they get progressively longer. So the shorter pieces go on the inside rounds and the longer pieces on the outside. This is another paper piece block. So I have copied my pattern to paper piecing paper. So it'll be easier to remove. The beige square goes in the middle. I am not trimming down any of my strips in my opinion. The bigger the better when it comes to um, paper piecing. Uh, my first stitching line is going to be between A1 and A2. So I'm going to place my square on the back side, make sure I have at least a quarter of an inch hanging out beyond that stitching line. And to check that, you can hold it up to the light or somewhere close to a quarter. So it's going to be about halfway through that rectangle. So this piece is right side up. And then I will take my dark orange strip and I'm going to match it to the edge on the side where um, where I'm going to be stitching. So here, and then I'm going to flip it over and put a couple pins in it. I don't want it to shift, but can double check. See, I got it out of square. So I'm just gonna match those two up. Line this up, pin, and again it's two pins because I don't want it twisting on me. And now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine with a shortened stitch length, about 1.5, a larger needle, about a 80 or a 90, and then I'm going to use an open toe foot, which I don't think I mentioned before. I'm going to start just before the stitching line and end right after it, and I will show you the stitching on this one. All right, I also like to use needle down pretty much all the time when I'm sewing. That way if I stop, I stop on the line and don't get off. Um, you don't have to sew as slow as I'm slow at sewing, but you need to be accurate. You want to stay on that line. So first line and I'll just stitch all of them exactly the same way. Okay, I've stitched it, so now I'm going to press it as sewn. 
And then I'm going to flip this back. The seam allowance is going to go toward the second piece I add. So it's always going to go toward the last piece I added. I'm going to press to that direction. Because I have this long tail hanging out here and I'm going to continue to use that piece, I'm going to trim that side first. So I'm using my add a quarter plus. I'm putting the beveled edge along the line between a one, two, three, and then a four. Folding back on that line. And then I'm going to flip it over so I have the groove up against the paper and trim off. Now the next piece I'm adding is A3, which is on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that side, so the beveled side on the line between A1 and A3. I'm going to fold my paper back, flip over so that the groove rides there against the paper, trim off, and now I'm going, it, I'm going to take the same orange that I used over here, put it on this side. I'm going to put a couple pins in it. And I will put a second one in there, but I don't have it handy right now. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine exactly like I did last time. So on that line between A1 and A3, starting a little bit before the line and ending a little bit after it. So again, I'm going to press the seam in place. Then I'm going to flip toward the last piece that I added and press. And I actually pre-trimmed my quarter inch on this side, so I really don't need to worry about it. If yours is not a quarter of an inch, if it's bigger, you can always do your trimming after you sew the seam. So I would flip on the seam. I would do that before I ironed actually. Put my quarter inch on there and trim it off. I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm pre-trimming. So once again, I am going to, my tail is sticking out up here on this side. So I'm gonna fold on that line between A4 and A1, 2, and 3. If your couple stitches right there when you go to fold, just pop them out of the paper. And I'm going to trim that down to a quarter of an inch. So I am now ready. I've trimmed it on both sides on that one to A4. So I'm ready to put my orange piece on here again. And these are longer than they need to be. So if it looks like you're starting to run out a fabric you shouldn't be I have plenty still you can always scooch it in you just want to make sure you have it a quarter of an inch beyond this line so I could scooch it in like this if I wanted to and stop down here when I'm sewing which I'm gonna go ahead and match it up because I have plenty of fabric to flip it over Put a couple pins in here And now I'm going to sew this line that is running along A4. So starting a little bit before, ending a little bit after. I'm gonna repeat the same process over again, press. And if I was worried about that not being a quarter, I think it's close enough. I can always fold on my stitching line. I should have done it. Well, I didn't press it the one way. And I can check it and I can trim off anything extra. It's not exactly a quarter of an inch. It's not a big deal. And this time my tail's hanging out on this side. So I'm going to fold on the line between A3 and A7. Wait a minute, back up. I'm gonna press it first, although it wouldn't matter if I had done that now. Just don't wanna accidentally cut off fabric that should have stayed in the block. between A3 and A7, fold that back on the line, put the groove down on there, cut, 
So I'm using one color to go all the way around the center every time. So my next spot that I'm adding is on this side. So I am ready to trim that seam allowance down to a quarter. So I'm putting my groove on the line between A1, 2, 3, and A5. And I'm going to flip it over and trim it down to a quarter of an inch. And now I'm going to take this paint, um, a little, it's okay. I'm going to take my remaining piece of orange here, put it matching up with this line, although I'm a little bit crooked. I'm going to pen in a couple of places so that it doesn't come up while I'm sewing. It's not fun to rip out 1.5 inch length, not inch. 1.5 long stitches. I will stitch on this line now, the same one that I folded on. So between, it's always the line that's running against the next piece we're adding onto, adding onto the piece. So I'm going to stitch on this line along A5, again starting and stopping just beyond my stitching line. So once again, I am pressing. It's close enough to a quarter of an inch for me, so I'm not going to retrim. And it's pressed. Now I need to trim off between A, we just did A5, so A6 is going to be the next one that's going on. So I'm going to trim here on this line that just runs right along. It's on the left side when I'm sitting it this way, or on the top when you're looking at it. I'm going to put my beveled edge there. I'm going to fold on that line and I'm going to trim. Okay, our next color that is going on is the, the brown floral. And I'm not gonna keep showing you this because it's just the same thing over and over again. I add onto the two sides, so A6 and then A7, and I'm trimming in between every time. And then I'm adding A8 and A9. And unlike a typical log cabin, we are taking the rounds all the way around and we're also doing opposite sides instead of going clockwise or counterclockwise around the center. So my next piece is A6, then A7, A8, A9. And I'll come back between each round. One more thing. I think there's plenty of fabric to go around even if we left these pieces wide. But I think, just to be sure, I'm going to trim after each round. So I will go ahead and put my line here between A4 and A8, between A3 and A7, between A5 and A9, just to trim that all up before I get started. You have a little more fabric than what the pattern called for, but it's also a little bit wider, so that could. So now I should have a pretty even looking front. There we go. And I'll start adding from that point. My second round is in place, so I'm gonna do exactly what I did last time and trim all the way around it before I add the next orange one. So I'm going, it's the lines beyond the ones that I just stitched. Fold back. Quarter inch seam allowance. Think. Make sure you don't right here on the stitching line or you just lost all your fabric. We're going on lines that we have not stitched on yet for folding in this step. Remember where if we've gone beyond, we just fold back and pop those stitches out of the paper. So it should be pretty good other than right at the very end. We have one more. Again, it's unfolding in this step on lines that do not have stitching 
on them. Okay, so round two is on. My next round is the lighter orange. And again, we're going to go opposite sides. We're going to be putting on A10, A11, A12, and A13. I finished my third round, so I'm going to trim it down again. Remember, I'm trimming on the lines that do not have any stitching, popping threads out of the paper where I need to, where I went beyond the seam lines. Did this side, yeah, pretty much. The place it might need any is right there on the short piece that I just sewed on, and the last side. Okay, so the last round is the dark brown that's really just a tone on tone and we're going to do exactly the same thing it's going to go on the two sides 14 and 15 and then 16 and 17. all right i added my last round and i like to stitch inside the outside seam allowance just to hold everything to the paper before i trim now be careful when you're trimming this because the pattern was really close to the edge of the page so you may not have a quarter of an inch on the paper. So we want to make sure this ends up at five and a half inches wide. So you may need to adjust a hair. Mine is a little bit. I'm going to put just a regular ruler. You do not want the add a quarter for this because there's no um, folded edge for it to grip onto. I'm putting the quarter of an inch on the solid line so the outside solid line and I'm actually fudging it I'm going just inside the seam allowance so that my quarter inch is riding on the outside of that line I'm going to trim and rotate Help if I do this so I can check so my five and a half is going to be there we just want to make sure we have a five and a half inch block when we're finished. And you could certainly use a square ruler too. So now I've trimmed two sides. I'm going to make sure I have five and a half. So I'm going to put my five and a half mark on my cut edge over here. And I'm going to also put a line along my cut edge here. And trim because I care more about it being five and a half inches square than whether that outside um, row is a little bit wider or narrower. And I'm also putting my five and a half inch mark here, any line on top and bottom, and see I do not have paper all the way to the edge on this side. That's why I want you to pay attention. So, so now I have a five and a half inch block. Now, for those of you that despise paper piecing, and I know you're out there, this block would not have to be paper pieced. Um, you would start, if you didn't want to paper piece it, with a one and a half inch square, and then cut all your strips to one inch wide. So they, this finishes at a one inch square, and these all are finishing at a half inch strip. Okay, for the framed scrappy nine patch, you have nine squares and one blue strip. So our nine squares, we're going to trim down to one and a half inches, and I've just stacked them up in groups of three. You can do that if you want to, or you can trim them all individually, completely up to you. So clean cut two edges, 
And then I've put it on a small mat so I can just rotate the mat. And I'm going to line my one and a half inch line up with the two edges that I just cut. So here and here. And trim. I'm going to do that to all nine of the squares. We're going to cut the blue strip down to one and a half inches wide. So I do have mine folded. I'm going to put a line on the fold. And then clean cut two edges. And then line up my one and a half inch mark here with the edge I just cut and I'm also lining up a line with my clean cut end and cut and then from that one and a half inch strip we need two five and a half inch pieces and one three and a half inch piece so that is nine inches total you don't have a lot of extra so I'm going to line up my nine mark down here on this end. Cut off my fold and then slide back to, it doesn't matter, either the five and a half mark or the three and a half mark here on this short end and cut. We're going to arrange our nine squares however you want them and then we're going to sew them together in rows. Once our squares are sewn into rows we're going to press the top and bottom rows one direction and the middle row the opposite direction. It doesn't matter as long as the middle is going opposite these two rows. Now we are just going to sew the rows together to make our nine patch. Once I've stitched the rows together then just pick a direction to press your seams. Note to self if you press your seams all in one direction you cannot pop the seams. So if I had pressed the seams on the center in and the top and bottom row out, I would have been able to pop those intersections. Our next step is to take our shorter blue strips and sew them to opposite sides of our nine patch. And this nine patch should be three and a half inches at this point. After adding the two shorter blue strips, I pressed out toward the blue and then we're just going to add our two longer ones to the top and bottom. Here's the finished framed scrappy nine patch. I press the seams again toward the blue. So what if the nine patch hadn't been three and a half inches? What could I do to correct that besides tearing it apart and trying again? Well, if it was smaller than three and a half inches, when I sewed the blue on, I could have taken a slightly smaller seam allowance. Now, if it's way smaller than three and a half inches, you're probably going to need to tear it apart. But if I take a slightly smaller seam allowance, that makes it bigger and you're not really going to notice that the outside squares would be a little bit bigger. If it was bigger than three and a half inches, I could trim it down or I could add my blue strips on and then trim the whole block down to five and a half inches. For the window pane block, we have four pieces of fabric. We have Patterns calling a tan square and a tan strip, and then we have a brown rectangle and a brown strip. The tan square is being cut down to one and seven eighths, and I'm using the itty bitty eighths ruler. You don't have to, you can use your other regular rulers. Um, completely up to you, but you do want to be sure you get an accurate one and seven eighths. So I'm clean cutting two edges, rotating. And then I'm putting the 1 and 7 eighths line on those two sides that I just cut. And when I'm using this ruler, I always want to run my eye on that line out to the outside edge to make sure I'm on the correct line. And then from our brown rectangle, we are going to cut two squares that are at least two and a quarter inches square. Uh, we'll just do it long ways. So I'm going to trim it down to two and a quarter wide. So clean cut two edges. 
rotate two and a quarter times two is four and a half. So I'm putting the two and a quarter line on my long edge that I just cut and my four and a half mark down here on my cut end. And cut. If you wanted to, you could probably get two and a half inch squares out of that, which would be fine because we will be trimming down later. I'm going to move, move my ruler back to the two and a quarter mark. And then I'm going to cut both of these in half one time on the diagonal. So if you want to, to be precise, you can line up your 45 degree line with one cut edge. It's not that big a deal on this. But sometimes it's very important. Cut. So then, I am going to basically make a square and a square unit. So brown triangles to opposite sides of my tan square and I always like to sew with the square on top when my triangles are oversized because the square is the accurate measurement not the triangle. Once I've sewn the triangles on I'm going to press toward the triangles away from the center and then we just want to add our last two triangles on the remaining two sides. Now if I had been paying attention when I first started cutting this square and square unit I would have told you you can use the square squared ruler by Deb Tucker for this uh, square and a square unit because it finishes at two inches. So if I had used that rather than cutting the one and seven eighths, which is gonna work just fine, I would have cut my center square using this, this square that says for two inch finished. Our triangles, they called for two and a quarter inch squares, which is what we did and cut in half on the diagonal. Now we need to trim this unit down. I did sew the other two triangles on and press toward the brown again. If you're trimming with a regular ruler, we're trimming it to two and a half inches. So half of two and a half is one and a quarter. So I would put the one and a quarter mark, and I don't know how well you can see it here. On the point, make sure there's a quarter of an inch above it. And again, I would want my two and a quarter mark running here so that I have another quarter of an inch beyond here and my quarter inch, one and a quarter here, running all the way through there and here. And then I would trim two sides, flip it around and finish trimming it to two and a half. Now, if I'm using the square squared ruler, then, oh, you can see this on the brown. This is what I'm trimming to here. So I will mark these kind of cross hatch marks here that say two up with my corners here and here as well with the corners on the um, my piece. So I have one here and this one because I didn't cut it with this may not be exactly, it's really close so the square would have been a little bit more accurate with the square squared ruler because it's probably a sixteenth inch me measurement. So I've got a two inch mark here, two inch mark here, here and here and then I'm going to cut now, if this is the only, if you don't already have the square squared ruler, then I probably wouldn't go buy it just for one square in a square block, but I do love this ruler for square in a square. It is limited to one, two, three, four, or five or six inch finished square and square units. So I'm now lining my solid line up with those two lines I just cut. My corners really should be matching up here on the corners inside. It may not be exact because I didn't use it to cut the center. And there's my square squared, my square and a square unit. My tan strip, I'm trimming down to one inch wide. I do have mine folded. So I'm just going to put a line on the fold, trim, and trim off the end. And rather than picking it up, I would either rotate the mat or walk around going to put my one inch mark on my edge I just cut, my long edge, and a line down on the short edge and cut. And then from this one inch strip, I need two pieces that are two and a half 
and two pieces that are three and a half, so that's six inches total. So I'm going to trim this strip down to six inches long. So I'm putting my six inch mark on my cut end down here, cutting off the folded edge. I'm doing these two at a time. You don't have to. You could do it one long strip. And then I'm going to back my ruler up either to three and a half or two and a half. It doesn't make any difference which. So my three and a half mark is there on the short edge. And cut. So that's my two, two and a half inch, and that's my two, three inch. So I'm going to frame my square and a square unit out with these guys. So I will put two short ones on opposite sides and stitch those. When I'm sewing, I'm going to be sewing with the square and a square unit on top because I want to hit that intersection so that I save my points or get them exactly. After sewing those strips to the edge, I pressed toward the tan strips and now I'm just going to add the remaining two strips to the other two edges of my square and square unit. I'm working with my brown strip cut in half and you do have a little bit more than what the pattern calls for. Uh, your strip probably has a selvage on it and you're going to want to trim that off when you do your clean cutting. So I have folded it down on this end so I can see it to trim it off. So we're trimming this strip down to one and a half inches wide. So I'm going to put lines on my fold because I am working with it folded. You don't have to if you're running it on a mat that's big enough to unfold it. And if you have a ruler long enough, you can cut one edge, trim off the selvage edge. And I'm walking around and it was one and a half. I'm going to line my one and a half up here, any line down on my cut edge on this end, trim. And then from this piece, we need two three and a half inch pieces and two five and a half inch pieces. So that's two and a half, I mean three and a half plus five and a half is nine inches. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my folded piece down to nine inches. If you are working on it all unfolded, it would be 18 inches. So, so I have a it lined up my lines with my two long cut edges. So I cut it at nine and then I back the ruler up to either three and a half or five and a half. It doesn't make any difference which. So I'm putting my five and a half inch mark on the short edge and cut. So that gives me my three and a half inch piece and my five and a half inch piece. And there are two of them because I had it folded in half. After sewing my two longer tan strips on, I pressed out toward the strips. And now we're going to take our two shorter brown rectangles that we cut and sew them to opposite sides again. And I will be pressing out toward the brown. Okay, like I said, I pressed out toward the brown. And my last step is to add the two five and a half inch brown strips to the re remaining two sides of the block. And again, I will press toward the brown. Here's my finished window pane block. And just like all the others, it should be five and a half inches when it's finished. 